I grieve for these senseless killings, and I ache for the scars that are left behind on the victims and on our community. Tonight at 6, our community is grieving after a mass shooting at Greenwood Park Mall. Families and neighbors have many unanswered questions. And tonight, we have major updates from police. In fact, just this afternoon, we learned the names of the victims and what happened inside the mall. We've got team coverage for you tonight at 6. We're learning more about the shooter and the man who stopped him. And we'll get to all of that in a moment, but we want, want to begin our team coverage tonight with Anne Marie, who joins us live from Greenwood Park Mall. Anne? Well, good evening, Scott. You know, it was at exactly this time last night at the mall food court right behind me that the gunman went in and opened fire. In the end, four people were dead. Three of them were victims. And Dustin Grove joins me now live to tell us a little bit more about these people who lost their lives in this senseless tragedy. Dustin. And Anne, when you hear these people's names and the stories of what happened inside the mall here 24 hours ago, you really are reminded uh, just that this could have been any one of us. I talked with a relative of 30 year old Victor Gomez today. He was a husband and father. He was there with his wife and his three young kids in the mall. I'm told his wife was using the restroom. He was standing outside. That's when the shooter walked out of the man's room, uh, the men's room and began shooting. Victor Gomez of Indianapolis was the first victim. Seconds later, the shooter walked into the food court area just a few feet away and shot Pedro Pineda and his wife Rosa, both from Indianapolis. That couple was sitting at a table in the food court having dinner. The Pinedas were the second and third victims who died. There were also two people injured. A 22 year old woman struck in the leg. She survived and a 12 year old girl was struck in the back by a bullet fragment as she was trying to run away. That little girl's mom, Anne Marie, told our Carlos Diaz today that that 12 year old was able to get away when she was reunited with her family. That's when they realized that she had been struck. They called 911. She was treated. She is expected to be OK. Her family describes her as one tough little cookie. And back to you. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, Dustin. There was a fourth person who was killed in the incident here 24 hours ago last night, and that was the shooter. He was killed by an armed citizen, someone that police are calling a good Samaritan. Today, our Jenny Runovich talked to the people that are close to the man who police tonight are also calling a hero. As police rushed shoppers to safety Sunday, Shay Goldman's grandmother was getting frightening calls and texts. She says, Grandma, I'm okay. She said, but I'm terrified. You know, and then she says, Grandma, what is the world coming to? And she said, I don't think I'll never step a foot in a mall again. Her granddaughter was in the food court, traumatized but safe, thanks to Shay's boyfriend, Elijah Dickin. The 22-year-old from Seymour took down the mall shooter. Eli's the man police call a hero. Well, I just know that I'm so proud of him for what he's done. He saved my granddaughter. I know he did. She said on the phone when she called me, she's grandma, I'm okay. That Eli pushed me out of the way and told me to get down and to stay down. And everybody should be proud of him. You know what I'm saying? For what he's done. Because if not, there would have been a lot more. Shay told her grandma she spotted the gunman coming out of the bathroom. And she said, Grandma, I seen a long gun. And then all of a sudden, Eli told her get down and pushed her. And she said it went from there. Investigators say Eli within seconds stopped the suspect, pulled out the pistol he was carrying under the constitutional carry law, steadied himself against a pole and fired 10 rounds from 40 yards away. The suspect tried to go back in the bathroom, but instead fell to the ground. His actions were nothing short of heroic. Um, he engaged the, the gunman from quite a distance with a handgun. Uh, was very proficient in that, very tactically sound. And as he moved to uh, close in on the suspect, he was also motioning for people to exit behind him. If he didn't stop, do you think of how many people in that food court? 19 year old Shay, who's in nursing school, took action too, helping a woman shot in the leg. She said she took her coat off and put a tourniquet around it and waited. Both young people courageous in chaos, police say, amid deadly trauma at the mall. I'm glad they're both okay and I'm glad he did what he did, but we need prayers for him. He needs prayers because that's all. To take somebody's life is hard.
would imagine that would be very difficult that police are calling him a hero. And then also when you buy a weapon like that, certainly it's with the hope that you never have to use it. He did fire 10 shots last night. And police, that's some of the information that police have learned as they're piecing together evidence from the investigation. They worked here at the mall all throughout the night. The mall was remained closed today and it will reopen tomorrow. P Rich Nye joins us now from the Greenwood City offices with more on what he's learned about the police investigation. Rich. And Marie, the big question right now is the police have not told us a motive for this shooting, but here at the Greenwood City Center this afternoon, police did tell us what happened last night at the Greenwood Park Mall. And they know because they've watched the entire incident on surveillance video. This started on Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon at 4.54 p.m. Jonathan Saperman came in the entrance near the food court with his rifle and pieces in a bag and went straight to the restroom. He was in there for just over an hour. At 5.56 p.m., he came out of the restroom and started firing into the food court, killing a man walking toward him and a married couple sitting at a table. Two more people were injured by bullets. And at 5.57, bystander Eli Dickin confronted Saperman who tried to retreat to the restroom, but Dickin shot and killed the suspect. The shooting lasted less than two minutes. The most puzzling piece of the, uh, this puzzle is the fact that he was in that restroom for an hour and two minutes. Uh, we believe, uh, and we don't want to speculate, but we believe he was getting ready. He had a waistband holster on with several magazines. Uh, he had a backpack that had a or a second uh, rifle. Saperman had 100 rounds of ammunition and a handgun on him as well, but only fired that one rifle before he was shot and killed by the bystander. Police say Saperman fired 24 rounds. Eli Dickin fired 10 rounds from his handgun. And tonight, Sierra Putnam tells us more about that suspect shooter who lived less than a mile from the Greenwood Park Mall. And Rich, he lives here or lived here at the Polo Run Apartments. His actual building is a little further back into the complex. We spoke to a longtime resident who said he saw the shooter around, but nothing about him actually stood out until, of course, the news of his identity came out today. Now, I'm only going to say this suspect's name once. His name is Jonathan Saperman of Greenwood. He's accused of carrying out the shooting. Police say he actually walked from his apartment to the Greenwood Mall last night. That's about a 15 minute walk. The shooter reportedly lived in that apartment you just saw inside. Police say he left his oven on high and put a laptop inside with butane nearby. Neighbors were evacuated from their homes last night. Some tell me for up to three hours. When you hear that, what do you think? I think about he's going to blow up. <laughs> uh, an explosion, you know. You know, they say it, it won't take but a stick of dynamite to put one in one building and it explode and that gas leak, it would the whole area. How thankful are you that they were able to? I'm very thankful for me and my grandson and my wife and everybody, the neighbors, and I'm very happy. We do know the shooter recently bought the gun he used during the shooting. Police say it was a Sig Sauer Model 400M rifle. And police say he actually practiced shooting at Range USA, according to family. There is a range about 15 minutes from his home. Now, here's a few additional things that we know about this man. Now, family report that he was recently evicted. However, police say they're still trying to confirm that bit of information. 13 investigates also looked into that, and so far there is not an eviction case on court records that we could find. What we also know is that he recently resigned from a warehouse job, and police say they had some run-ins with him when he was a juvenile, but he did not, did not have a criminal history as an adult. Anne-Marie. All right, Sierra, thank you so much for all that great information. As you can imagine, it was really chaotic after the shots were fired. People were fleeing the scene, many of them leaving their, their purses, their bags, their shopping items, pieces of clothing behind. Police have collected all of those items and would like shoppers who were in the mall last night to come claim them tomorrow between 9 and 5 at the police training center tomorrow. That address is 736 Lowe's Boulevard.
This has been a very tough day. It's a day of mourning and also people can come together for a vigil tonight at Resurrection Lutheran Church in Greenwood at seven o'clock. It is a prayer service for people to try to find some strength and understanding in these tragedies that have unfolded in the last 24 hours. Back to you.